following video contains scenes of real talk from Jordan Riley that may offend you, convict you, and maybe even convert you. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's word. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about something that you probably would not believe unless I showed it to you. I was shocked when I discovered this, and I want to bring it to your attention because this is absolute craziness. I want to show you this really quick. There's a screenshot right here. It says Mount Sinai to receive new Ten Commandments. What? New Ten Commandments? Are you serious? Were the old ones not good enough that God gave Moses in Exodus? Okay, so an interfaith group of leaders, interfaith a group of leaders put together by none other than Pope Francis gathered together last week um, on Mount Sinai to hold a repentance ceremony, whatever that means. And please, let's just stop and really have some frank discussion, okay? Understand that interfaith should already bring red flags right there. But a repentance ceremony, if you look at everything, and I've looked at all the documents and the, the write-ups of this, they're not repenting of sin. They're repenting of something way different and way unbiblical, which we're going to get into in just a second. So, and understand, Pope Francis, that should be another red flag. If you doubt that, I want you to go look at this video right here. It's one of my former videos about the Catholic faith and Catholicism. You need to do your homework and watch that. But let's talk about this. So interfaith, it is not biblical. It sounds nice, like we're all getting along, along and having a big old hug and, you know, praising Jesus. No, that's not what's happening at all. Many of you know this, and I'm sure you've seen the bumper stickers. It says coexist, all the different symbols of all different kind of faiths and stuff like that, that we're supposed to get along and we're all supposed to just, to, we're worshiping the same Jesus. I mean, Rick Warren says that, you know, Muslims and Christians worship the same Jesus. Wrong. That's not biblical at all. And again, please understand that Jesus never said that. He didn't say, hey, you know what? You should all work together. You know, even if you don't believe in me and you've rejected me and you hate me and you teach a different gospel, we should all just team up together. No, Galatians 1 verses 6 through 9 is very, very clear that if you teach a different gospel, if you teach things contrary to scripture, you are damned. That is, I mean, scripture can't be much more clear than that. Also, if you study what these people did, not only did they come together to have this repentance ceremony and have some new Ten Commandments, but they also took two tablets and smashed them and broke them um, on Mount Sinai. That should take you back to Exodus when Moses went up to the mountain, got the Ten Commandments, and came down the mountain to find that the Israelites were worshiping a golden calf. It was an idol. It was idolatry. And he was so furious and couldn't believe what he was saying. He was overcome and he smashed the Ten Commandments and had to go get new ones from the Lord. So again, they're taking things and starting to twist it already. But again, let's take a look at this Ten Commandments they issued, okay? And I don't know if you heard me. I'm going to say it one more time. New Ten Commandments, okay? That is pure blasphemy. Nowhere in Scripture did you, do we see that God's going to give us New Ten Commandments, the ones he gave us in Exodus are just fine. Go to Exodus 20 and read them for yourself. They're crystal clear and they have stood the test of time because God's word stands forever. Because so again, they're taking what happened in Exodus 31, 18 with Moses, Mount Sinai, and they're mocking it. Please, I'm not going to mix words, you guys. This is satanic and demonic. This isn't loving. These aren't a bunch of nice, you know, interfaith people who love Jesus and want to do good. No, this is a satanic agenda. You have to catch this. This is part of a one world religion that is being slowly woven together. People want to say, oh, we can just get along and we have a lot in common with the Muslims and the Catholics and the Protestants and, you know, Buddhists and whoever. No. Nowhere in scripture does this call for any of this stuff. No, not at all. And I want you to see that as we get more into this. But I want you, I want to read the, the new Ten Commandments and I want you to see this a second. Number one, we are stewards of the world. Okay. Number two, creation manifests destiny. Whatever that means. Number three, everything in life is interconnected. Number four, do no harm. Number five, Look after tomorrow. Six, 
rise above ego for our world. Wow. Number seven, change our inner climate. What? Number eight, repent and return. Now that sounds nice, but there's no return to what? Repent of what? Number nine, every action matters. Duh. And number 10, use mind, open heart. Literally, as Chris Rosebro puts it, that is a bunch of word salad. It's blah, 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 nonsense. This is completely almost pure new age, man-centered garbage. It has nothing to do with the Lord. It has nothing to do with sin. It has nothing to do with holiness. It has to do with climate change. That's all this is. Let's just take care of the planet. We got to make sure we save the planet because of global warming and all this nonsense is going on. And please, do you not see the blasphemy that's going on here? Let's look at this a second. So these people are interfaith we've talked about. They're helping to promote a one world religion. Let's just all get along. We all worship the same God. We all can work together, okay? Which, okay, the Bible says will not happen. And if you look at Revelation, it does talk about the one world religion that the Antichrist is going to try to put together. See that going on. But here's a screenshot right here of the headquarters. They're set to open this year over in the Middle East. And guess what? It's an interfaith headquarters. Now, the funny thing about this, actually it's sad, but Christians are not allowed to attend. They're not allowed to be there. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Why would they keep Christians away from that place? If we're all supposed to get along, we're all supposed to work together, and we all worship the same God. Something's up there. Also, if you saw there, they came together to repent of climate change. Again, said no verse ever. Where in the Bible did Jesus ask us to repent of global warming or to repent of how we didn't plow the earth right or that we didn't take care of Mother Earth? Nowhere. It's not there. So please understand this. I'm going to show you a correlation and hopefully you'll see this. There is simple idolatry going on. Remember Moses, when he first came down from the mountain, what did he get so mad about? He saw them worship the, the Israelites at the bottom of the mountain of Mount Sinai. They had melted all their stuff together to make a golden calf to worship. They had traded worshiping the one true God for an idol. Now, let's look at this interfaith, the Pope, New Ten Commandments. What are they worshiping? You've guessed it. They're worshiping the planet. Mother Earth, this world, that's their idol. That's the golden calf. You have to see this. This is so idolatrous, it's unbelievable. And you look at what Romans 1 verse 25 says, God condemns those who worship created things rather than the creator. That's why this is so demonic. See, Satan wants us to get our eyes off the creator, off the one true God. He wants us to worship created things that have no eternal value. It's temporary. Also, Rabbi Norell, I hope I pronounced that right, authored just recently the Eco Bible. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, which describes ecology as achieving a more sustainable future in accordance with God's word. What? Again, yes, Genesis says that we're to um, rule and we're to take dominion over this planet, but I don't see where we need to worry about climate change and worry about you know being eco-friendly in the Bible. So they have to create something new. And please, I'm not gonna mix any words. You have to hear this, you guys. Satan loves to counterfeit everything that God does. And that's why this whole thing with 10 commandments and the Pope and interfaith is demonic. Let's not mix words here, okay? So you look at it. I mean, look what the, you know, the LGBTQ, they came out with the queer Bible. Now these guys, they've come out with the eco Bible. I guess God's word, the Holy Bible, is not good enough. That goes against 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. See, these leaders are so worried about climate change, but God says, now this is crazy, let's talk, have some real talk here. God says that this world will implode and be burned with fire. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. This is what it says. It says, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. Wow. So instead of this interfaith calling people to Jesus, calling people to repent, 
to come back to the Lord, get in his word. No, no, they're worried about global warming. We got to save the planet. We got to rescue the planet. No. See, again, Satan always wants us to get our eyes off of the Lord, get us get our eyes off of God's word for a counterfeit, for something that's temporary rather than eternal. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says that we're to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So when you hear interfaith councils or interfaith conferences, run. Please run fast and get out. Okay, nowhere in scripture does it affirm interfaith anything. Okay, that is a different faith. Galatians, again, Galatians 1, 6 through 9 is very clear. They are damned. They are teaching a different gospel. They're teaching a different Jesus and they are on their way to hell. That's the sad part. We're lovingly though to correct them. Scripture is very clear to point them to the gospel. That's clear. But remember, see again, even if you look at interfaith, it almost sounds like universalism, that everyone's coming to Jesus, everyone's gonna be saved. We're all one big happy family. We're all God's children, which is not true. John 1 verse 12 says, we're not all God's children, but only those who have put their trust in the Lord, which is by the will of God, in verse 13 of John 1, not on the will of us. But I wanna remind you of this. Matthew chapter seven, verses 13 and 14. Jesus says that, Narrow is the way that leads to life and few are that find it. See, again, they would probably say, hey, everyone's going. We're all going to heaven. We're all just believing the same Jesus. Everything's great, okay? I wanna make it clear in this episode, it's time to stop worrying about global warming. It's time to stop listening to the Pope because the Pope is an antichrist. I didn't say he was the antichrist. He is a antichrist. He goes against everything biblical. He is someone to mark and avoid. But I want to make sure that we are focused on Jesus. We are focused on God's word because of this. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me.